Welcome friends, myself Shaptapurni from Biolife. Today we will discuss about complementation test. Okay, let's begin. Okay, what is complementation test? Complementation test is a genetic test to determine if two independently isolated mutations causing the same phenotype are in same gene or in the different gene. Okay, so... Let's take two cases. In case one, let's say in this kind of complementation test, what do we do? We just cross the parents with the same phenotype. Okay, but with different mutations. And we try to find out if the mutations are in the same gene or in the different gene by observing the genotype or the phenotype of the progeny. Okay. So here in case 1, parent 1 and parent 2. Okay. Parent 1, let's say parent 1, this is the uh, genotype of the parent 1. Say this is the phenotype. Sorry, genotype of the parent one where the A gene is mutated but the B gene is normal. Okay. So, let's say these are the A genes and these are the B genes. Okay. So, A is mutated but B is normal. So, what will happen in this parent? There will be no functional protein for the gene A. But there will be functional protein for the gene B. So as a result, they will show mutant phenotype. Okay. On the other hand, let's take the pairing 2 where the A gene is normal. So these are the capital A, capital A. But the B genes are mutated. So small b, small b. So here... The capital A is normal, but the B gene, small b, is mutated. Okay. So, here will also, the product of capital A gene will be produced, functional product, but no product of small b will be produced. As a result, it will also show the same mutant phenotype as the parent one. When we will, now when we will cross these two parents, okay, what will happen in the offspring? See, in the offspring, you will find that from this parent, it will get small a, capital B. And from P2, it will get capital A, but small b. Okay. For uh, easy identification, let's mark the mutant alleles. So, in the offspring, the offspring is getting good uh, or normal or wild type of b from the uh, p1 and it is also getting wild type of a from the p2. So here in the offspring, the two mutants are complementing each other. As a result, it will produce both functional proteins of capital A and capital B. And it will be of wild phenotype. Okay, wild phenotype. So what is evident from here? It is evident that when the mutations will be in the different genes, See, here the mutation is in the A gene and here the mutation is in the B gene. Then, the mutations can complement each other and this is known as the complementation test. Okay, the mutations in the transposition will complement each other. Transposition means when these two are in cis position but these two are in transposition. So, mutations in transposition are complementing each other. To produce the wild phenotype. Okay. Got it? Now coming to the case 2. In case 2. Let's say. The parent 1. 
has a mutation in the gene A and this mutation is known as small a1. And parent 2 has another mutation in the same gene but in the different portion. Okay. And this is known as small a2. So what will happen? When they will be crossed, the offspring will get this type of genotype. Okay. So, in the two homologous pair of the offspring's gene, in one pair A1 will be mutated, in another pair the A2 will be mutated. So, this gene also could not produce good functional protein and this gene also could not produce the good functional protein. As a result, offspring will also produce mutant protein, mutant, sorry, phenotype like its parents, okay? This is also produce mutant phenotype and this also produce mutant phenotype. So, what have we learned from this? That when two independent mutations will be in the same gene, they cannot complement each other. But when the two mutations, two different mutations will be in the different genes, they can complement each other. Okay. So this is our conclusion. So let's write it. From case 1 we have learned when two mutations are in the different genes they will complement each other. But case 2 is when two mutations resulting in same phenotype are in same gene they could not complement each other. And always remember that complementation test is only applicable for homozygous mutants. Okay. As you have seen that in the first case we have the uh, genotype of the parents were small a, small a, capital B, capital B. And in another parent, it was capital A, capital A, small b, small b. That means the homozygous mutation can cause the complementation test. Okay, now coming to an example. Here, 1 to 7 representing the number of mutations. Okay, we don't know if they are present in the same gene or they are present in the different gene. But all of the mutations causes the similar phenotype. Okay. Now, the positive sign means they are complementing each other. Okay. Complementation is happening. And negative sign means no complementation. Okay. Now, what does that mean? The positive, as the positive sign means the complementation is occurring, it means that those mutants will be in, mutants will be in different genes, okay? And no complementation means mutants are in the same gene. Now try to find out the complementation groups. See, from this one, from this row, we can say that one is not complementary with the 6 and 7. So, 1, 6 and 7 are present in the same gene. So, we can group them like 1, 6, 7. But, 1 is complementary with the 2, 3, 4, 5. That means, they are not, 1 is not present with the 2, 3, 4, 5. So, they are grouped in another portion. Now, from the second row, we can see that 2 is non-complementary with 5. That means 2 and 5 are in the same group. So, now let's group 2 and 5 together.
together. Now, from this, we see that 3 is non complementary with 4. That means 3 and 4 are in the same group or in the same gene. Now, from this, we can see 4 is complementary with, uh, sorry, 4 is complementary with 5, 6, and 7. That means 4 is not in the gene of 5, 6, 7. That, see, 4 is uh, not in the gene of the 5, 6, or 7. Now, from this, we can see 5 is complementary with 6 and 7. So, 5 should not be present in the same gene as in the 6, 7. See, 5 is in the different gene. 6, 7 are in the different gene. Now, 6 and 7 are non-complementary. That means they will be in the same gene. See, 6 and 7 are in the same gene. So, this means that there are 3 complementary groups. 1, 6, 7 is 1. Then 2, 5 is another. And at last, the 3, 4 is another. So, there are total 3 complementary groups. 1, 2, 6. 1, 6, 7. These 3 mutations are in the same gene. 2 and 5, these mutations are in the same gene. Whereas 3 and 4, these mutations are also in the same gene. Okay. Okay, with this we end our today's lesson here. If you like my content, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. I post regularly videos on different topics of biology and zoology. So please subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy learning.